Oh, hello! My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa! Yeah, so today we are going to do a little February 2018 reading wrap-up. Now, it was a somewhat disappointing reading month for me just because I had so much going on between like kind of closing up work, uh, between moving and getting all the logistics of that fully planned basically in a week. <laughs> um, I didn't get as much reading done as I wanted to. Now I still read 11 books and just a note on volume. When I say I didn't read as much as I want to and then I still read 11 books, what I mean by that is there were many times in the month where I wanted to read but I was too either stressed or anxious or whatever that I couldn't focus on reading and that's why it was disappointing. Not because oh 11 books isn't a lot of books to get through like I'm completely aware that that's you know plenty for most people but it's not it's not about the volume it's more just that I when I wanted to read I couldn't <laughs> and that's why I felt disappointing because I yeah I just couldn't focus the way I wanted to so anyway before I get into my hits my surprises and my disappointments let's do some stats I like the way I did it last month with sort of a voiceover so here are my stats so as you can see like I said I read 11 books this month and of those three of them came off of my TBR and eight came from the library so I have actually been reading a lot from the library this year not that I don't always do that but yeah I've noticed that I've been even more so reading a lot from the library. I did get through four audiobooks which is the only reason why I read as many books as I did to be honest because um yeah they are just a little easier to get through. Um, one physical book which was a new book I'll talk about that here in a minute and then six ebooks. And then I actually had a very, like, when I was looking at my numbers the thing I probably read the most of was nonfiction and mystery but I actually really had a pretty good blend of stuff um, including more what I would probably consider to be kind of literary type fiction which was something I've been trying to get get myself to be a little bit more on top of reading so that was great and then in terms of just volume so I did read 3200 ish 3300 ish pages with an average of about 300 pages a book which is pretty typical for me um, and as you can see in terms of ratings it was actually a very good month so I didn't have any uh, anything under three stars and that's very unusual for me. So in terms of just like quality of reads, I was I was actually doing pretty good. My average rating was a 4.81 unicorns on my scale, so almost at five, which is very high. And then three and a half stars. So yeah, I felt like in terms of quality, this was really great. And then I'm gonna start calling out how many of my total books read are Poirot rereads, just like for my own memory but yeah three of the books that I read were par rereads. I actually reread a lot but I don't count them in my total books read number with the exception of the par ones just because I am reading those a lot more closely so I feel like it does count as like a full read. Yeah so then with that in mind let's go ahead and just jump right into the hits, the surprises, and the disappointments. So as I mentioned I didn't have anything that was a bad read this month. Um, usually I have at least a few that I'm like Murr on but there was none that I would think of as like truly like when I say disappointments the one I'm going to talk about is not even all that disappointing but anyway all that to say keep that in mind that n none of these got lower than a three star so what I'm going to call my disappointing read is Roomies by Christina Lauren now the reason I'm picking this one I gave it a three star I did really like I enjoyed it um if you don't know Christina Lauren writes new adult slash adult romance some like she kind of straddles the line it's a writing team they kind of straddle the line there but I love their voice they have just such a engaging voice that even though I don't usually like new adult very much I can usually enjoy their books and I did really enjoy the voice of Rumi's a lot I thought it was a fun read it went by very quickly but I had two big issues with it one there's this whole it's like a convenient a marriage of convenience which you guys know is a trope that I really love the reason that they are getting married is a like immigration plot and if you live here in the US you know that just like the entire topic of immigration is a little like it's a little sticky right now and it just felt a little tone deaf basically um, I'll leave there was a really good review on smart bitches trashy books about that so I will leave that in the comments if you're or in the description box if you're interested in reading that um, I just thought it was a little bit tone deaf um, and I also just felt like the actual romance didn't work as well as I wanted to like it felt very slow and then very rushed so all of that to say I enjoyed it but I just don't think it was as good as it could have been which is disappointing because I really I think in general they're like a, a really um, fresh voice in the genre so I usually enjoy them but I just 
just did not enjoy this particular one as much as I wanted to. Now when it comes to surprise, um, I'm, I'm gonna go with two different avenues here. One was I read first The Four Tendencies, which I probably could have put in my hits because I really, really liked it. But The Four Tendencies and Happier at Home by Gretchen Rubin, I would call the former kind of like a non, just general nonfiction and the latter um, a memoir, basically. And I just really enjoyed her voice. I wasn't sure what I was going to think about her. Like the whole, she's, if you don't know, she's kind of the person behind The Happiness Project. And just that name kind of has always been a little off-putting to me. But I saw a very high recommendation for The Four tendencies which is sort of like about a personality thing and I actually found it resonated pretty well with me in terms of like my own life and then like how I experience others and I found myself kind of like thinking like oh yeah like that person is definitely an upholder that person you know what I mean so um, I actually really enjoyed that and I was surprised at how much I enjoyed that um, so I did I've already read two of her books on audio I think they work, work really well as audio and then I've got two other ones that I'm waiting on at the library so um, yeah I was surprised at how much I enjoyed Gretchen Rubin's work and then the other surprise was The Last Wolf by Maria Vale. Now this is one that I got as an ARC and I wasn't sure what to expect. I'd seen like, a f I think at the beginning of the year, a couple of people had mentioned like, oh, like this is, this is an anticipated release. So that was kind of how it got on my radar. And it was good. Like I didn't love it. I gave, I think I gave it three stars. Um, but the reason that happened was because I don't think it was as much of a paranormal romance as I was expecting it to be. It really was more of like, almost like a fantasy, and I don't think that the romance, this is like a common theme here, I don't think the romance piece worked as well, but I thought it was just a really interesting take on shifter mythology, and I would actually recommend it as something that would be good if you like fantasy and you're open to romance this might be a good one it kind of straddles the line i think between fantasy and romance in a way that's very interesting it was very interesting like i said shifter mythology it was like the prologue is happening in like the 1600s and it's very like kind of based in like celtic mythology so anyway i just thought it was like a very interesting very interesting world building basically and so that kind of just surprised me because it wasn't what i was expecting i was expecting like kind of a higher order paranormal romance and i don't really think that's exactly what it was so that was a surprise um i have a review on goodreads if i think i said some of my thoughts there as well but anyway so yeah that was that was the other kind of surprise that i had this month and then let's get to the hits so the first one that i want to talk about is the mary spinster now i'm going to have a review up for you guys tomorrow a yay or nay review which i also did for my other hit of the month which was the hazelwood which we'll get to in a second but anyway these are just like very quick like spoiler free like fuller thoughts so i won't speak that much about the Mary Spinster right now. I'll just say that I really enjoyed it. This was sort of my month of really enjoying fairy tale retellings because, uh, and I'll just go ahead and also start talking about this, The Hazel Wood is also definitely a, a kind of dark fairy tale retelling or fairy tale, like just dark fairy tales. And the Mary Spinster, I just thought was really, it, context, Mallory Ortberg um, was the force behind the now defunct the toast and you can definitely tell in her writing style that she comes from the world of blogging because I do find it to be a little bit choppy at times and a little bit um, not quite as beautiful as I want it to be which is why I think I ended up giving it a four out of five star instead of a five out of five but it's really thought-provoking it's very like very much dark fairy tales and if you I don't think I've actually talked about this a ton on this channel Angela Carter is one of my all-time favorite favorite short uh, short story writers. The Bloody Chamber is like one of my all-time favorite books and both the Mary Spinster and the Hazelwood, I'll get to this a little bit more in a minute, um, really remind me a lot of Angela Carter. So if you're somebody who enjoys her work, if you like that kind of like feminist dark fairy tale thing, I think the Mary Spinster is a great, a great choice for you and I'll get more into that in my review. The Hazelwood. So I, as I said, this is the best book that I've read so far this year. I absolutely love this. I was kind of surprised after I put out my review and I started looking more at what other people were saying that more people actually, like, this is kind of a divisive book. Not everybody loves this. But when I was reading the reviews, the consistent theme that I see in those reviews is that if you are expecting a YA fantasy, I don't think you're going to be happy with this book because that tends to be the, the theme of the reviews are, oh, well, the main character was so unlikable or this was just like 
not fantasy enough or not whatever enough and I think that it's an expectation issue and and I that's the honestly that's the fault of the publisher because it's their job to be clear who they're marketing to and I think that they really made a mistake trying to market this as a YA fantasy because I just don't think that's what it is like I was saying I think if you like Angela Carter who is definitely not YA you're much more likely to like this I would describe this to someone as Angela Carter meets the catcher in the rye. The main, the protagonist is not especially likable, but once you understand what her backstory is, it's like, well, yeah, no shit, she's not likable. <laughs> um, and yeah, and you don't get to the fantasy, like the true portal fantasy aspect of it until quite late in the book. It does have like a, a lot of mystery element to it. Um, and maybe that's part of why I liked it because recently I've been realizing how much I like kind of YA or um, protag like young protagonists doing like having a mystery happening. So anyway, all that to say, I really, really like this book. I recommend if you want to hear more of my thoughts, check out my yay or nay review. But again, I think that the kind of split on this really boils down to people not having their genre expectations met. So I would just tell you, if you're interested in this and you think you're getting a YA fantasy, I don't really think that's what this is. Like I said, I think that this is sort of a magical realism, Bilden's Roman, and this is Angela Carter plus Catcher in the Rye. If that, that sounds good to you, I think you'll really like this. If you're expecting something more like City of Ashes or um, Six of Crows or something like that that's not what this is so I just I think people just need to ha like make sure they know kind of what they're getting into or else they're they're not gonna be satisfied that wraps up February for me um, like I said I'm I'm a little sad that I didn't get to read as much I didn't get to read when I wanted to read because I was too stressed or anxious to do it sometimes um, but you know what I am now safely ensconced in my new place I even rearranged my bookshelves to be how I like them um, I'm going to do a bookshelf tour sometime soon I have to figure out when I can get some time to film that but um, I am just, I'm happy to be settled in. I've already read, I think like two or three, this is, you know, I'm filming this on the second day of March and uh, I've read two books already so far and that felt, that feels really good. That feels more like me. <laughs> I'm getting, like it's the first time this year basically that I'm having like free time to be able to, uh, to read as much as I want to. So that just feels good. So anyway, I am looking forward to March. If you're not aware, I am one of the co-hosts for March Mystery Madness, and please, you know, check all that out. I've got a couple of videos up about that. Um, you can check out the hashtag on Twitter, on Instagram. There's Instagram challenges. There's Twitter sprints. There's the whole schmageggy. So you'll be hearing a lot about mystery from me this month. But anyway, I'm looking forward to to diving in and getting some more reading done this month. Um, so yeah, I'm excited about that. But anyway. Um, I think that that's all I needed to tell you guys. So uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you're so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And yeah, I think that'll do it. I hope you guys are having a really wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow for The Merry Spinster. Bye!